Happy Sunday, Living Word. Pray everybody's doing well. We made it uh, through another week. Um, this week, uh, last week, PB um, touched on when we are broken. Um, man, the importance of being broken has really changed everything. Yeah, my perspective has truly, truly changed. Um, you know, we, of course, we don't appreciate the, the pain and the, and the starting over process. But more and more I'm seeing, you know, as history repeats itself, as, you know, we get deeper into the Bible, we see that history has always repeated itself. And in order to address brokenness in this world, we must first allow God to address the brokenness in us so that we can truly be used. And, you know, I'm super grateful that, I mean, who else can use brokenness the way that God does as a weapon, as, as, as a powerful tool of humility and, and through his grace to come out stronger than before. Um, so this week, our worship song is going to be Broken Vessels and you know no matter how we came here today no matter who's watching everybody who's watching um i know that god's plan for us supersedes our plans for ourselves and i mentioned last week proverbs 19 21 a man has many plans but god is the one who sees them through and that means his plan and you know, that can be a bittersweet thing sometimes because us letting go of our own agenda is a, is a long and, and, and challenging process. But there is no blessing like being used by God. There is no healing like God's. There is no love like God's. And that's why we're here. Literally, that's why we're here. We're not here because we want attention or we're not here because, you know, we're trying to gain followers. We, we want the followers to be for Christ. You know, all of us, we want our own relationship with the Lord because that's what matters. The religion doesn't matter. The, the spectacle doesn't matter. It's the heart that God's after. And so today as we prepare for the message, as we get deeper into the word, you know, my prayer is that God does something new. He always does when we surrender. My prayer is that we can be fully surrendered to what God has to say to us through his word. Um, and so, yeah, let's get into some worship, amen.
Good morning, and welcome to our Living Word Church home service. Well, if you haven't been with us following us, I want to welcome you, if you're here for the first time. I want to just start off with a little prayer, if you don't mind, and we can bow your heads with me as we uh, agree right now. Father, we just thank you right now for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your blessings, Lord, for all those that are joining us, Lord, or all those that will be hearing this message. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to have your way. Father, you said in your word that your word would not be returned void. So we thank you for having its way right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For those that are home, they've been home a lot and locked down and, and been able to, uh, you know, just be able to still connect with us. We just thank you for the opportunity you have given all these brothers and sisters and all those that are out there in their times of need. We thank you for your victory right now in Jesus' name. And all the saints said, amen and amen. Well, I want you to join us with this. As a matter of fact, why don't you turn your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 21, verse 15. Again, the book of John 21, verse 15. He said, "Do and this is Peter, uh, Jesus telling Peter in a conversation, he says, do you truly love me? Peter, do you truly love me? And folks, in this series, we're going to be focused on these three uh, statements uh, that Jesus uh, makes in asking Peter, does he love him? Today, we're going to focus on the first two points. The first two points is based on Jesus saying, Peter, do you love me? And he says it twice. The third time, it's a, a slightly different, although he says, Peter, do you really love me? The first two times that Jesus brings this up is the word, the Greek word, and agape. It's a sacrificial love he's asking here. But I want to slow things down. I want us to truly, Lord, Lord we're just going to ask that you really are attentive to what Jesus is saying to Jesus in this particular conversation. Now, imagine if Jesus asked you, do you love me? You know, of course, a lot of us would like to say, yeah, Lord, I love you. But Jesus led Peter through this experience. And this experience wasn't just an ordinary uh, approach to him. Because at this time, as our theme for the series is, when we are broken. And Peter was broken. You know, Jesus was teaching the disciples who walked with him for three years. He was the example. He was their mentor. He was everything to them. So imagine walking with Jesus on a day-to-day, -day, having the kind of conversations with him on a regular basis, being able to, you know, ask the questions we want to ask and getting a response from him there, being able to see the miracles, being able to be used by Jesus to do miracles. And this is all taking place in the, within these three years. But as soon as Jesus was arrested, Peter, broke down. He was broken. So I want to walk us through this because he myself learned quite a bit uh, from this particular uh, sermon the Lord gave me as I was preparing it. And a lot of times we don't realize that we are truly broken. You know that <laughs> we can only be used by God when we are broken. That is a fact. Only when we are broken can we really truly be open to what Jesus, or to uh, open to Jesus' truth. How is that possible? Well, when Jesus was arrested, Peter was broken. Now, let's, I'm gonna, we're going to be focused on these scripture verses which I'm going to give you right now. This is the Lost Supper. 
The Lord's Supper was told by Matthew in Matthew chapter 26, verse 20 through 30. Again, Matthew chapter 26, verse 20 through 30. Mark chapter 14, verses 17 to 26. Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 33. They all elaborated on the same experience, the Lord's Supper. An experience that they all had and gave their own interpretation or their own experience. And so we're going to be focused on, on these particular scripture verses. Now, when I started off with John chapter 21 verse 15, this was the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after his death, burial, and resurrection. And this is when he approached Peter asking him, do you love me? Jesus was leading Peter to this experience because he wanted to remove this cloud of denial. His failure, his trauma. And when I say um, trial of denial or cloud of denial, I'm talking about Peter going through a lot of emotional damage here. Jesus had denied Jesus three times. And so when Jesus is approaching him, I want you to think about this because it's, the denial goes in several stages here. There's denial about or what Peter's going through, his, his trauma, his, his grief, because Peter's going through grief at this point. And that, this is a stage of grief right now, of what he went through when he denied Jesus. I hope I'm making myself clear because I, I don't want to sort of miss this because it, I, I want you to really experience this the way I just did. And it was amazing. I had to go back in my life and realize the grief that I was going through in life when I went through a divorce. It was devastating. I didn't know. I was so busy trying to take care of my kids, trying to find a place to live, trying to take care of the church, trying to sort of uh, uh, fix things out and what was going on in the moment. There was so many things. So I got caught up in the moment of trying to do things and not enough time to focus on what was going on within me. I was sort of baffled when all this took place. And like Peter, you know, just went back to doing what you used to doing. Peter went back to fishing. So when the third time Jesus appeared to them, he, he appears to them on the beach. And so Peter is dealing with all these emotions. And so when Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? He's not talking about love the way we look at love emotionally. Agape love is sacrificial. But Jesus was trying to get him to see what he was going through. And as we walk through this, I want us to truly get to a place where we can take a step back and examine Luke, 20, Luke chapter 22, verse 33 says, this is Peter, and he says this in Luke, like I said, in Matthew 26 and in Mark, Peter, they all say the same thing in Peter's response when he's telling Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you. This is right after Jesus tells him, I'm going to go pay a price, I'm going to be doing things, and, and he's telling him, you guys can't follow me. This is on the day of the Lord's table. And this, there's a lot of things that took place prior to this that we're going to be talking about. And Jesus and Peter says to Jesus, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. And Jesus says, Peter, are you really? Would you really give your life for me? And Peter so many, so often was saying things like that. If you know Peter, if you know the story of Peter, then I'm going to, you know, uh, so often we hear Peter say this and so, so many times, John 13, 38, and, and as John says it, uh, Peter tells you, I will go to prison and die, even. This is Peter, based on what John says. And Jesus says, really, will you lay down your life for me? You see? But let's think a little earlier when Jesus is washing their feet. And, and he goes to Peter, and Peter says, you don't have to wash my feet, no, Lord. 
and, and, and every so often, you know, Jesus had to, you know, tell him, listen, Peter, settle down. And one time he says, Peter, get behind, saying, get behind me. And there are things that he had to sort of address Peter. Even the day that Jesus was going to be arrested, Peter comes out with a sword and cuts the soldier's ear off. Peter was truly a man, an impetuous man, like many of us. Especially when we're serving the Lord, we get sort of impetuous. We don't realize we think too much of ourselves because we know the Lord, because we, we are saved and we are in this place with God, but we don't realize that it's not about that. And so here, Peter has to, had to disown, disown Jesus three times as Jesus told him on the day of the Lord's day, but when he's telling him, I will lay down my life for you, Jesus. He says, Peter, you know, before the crow ends today, you're going to deny me three times. Now, I want you to hold on to that and keep your finger on chapter 21, John chapter 21, verse 15, where Jesus is telling him, you know, um, you know, Peter, you truly love me. And we're going to go back to, I'm going to read the actual scripture there. And I, I want us to go, because this experience uh, that Peter had with Jesus is so significant to where we are today in our walk with the Lord. And so, let's go to the Lord's table a minute. Several, several things are happening at the Lord's table at this moment. All right? I, I, I guess I, I, I found favor with the book of Luke, chapter 22. So let's, let's go there for a minute. Because there's a, quite a number of scripture verses that I want to sort of... Um, talk about. So, let's go to verse, uh, book of Luke, let's just start in verse 20, maybe even. It says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which I poured out for you. And this is, so you know that they'll talk, this is where they're at, the Lord's, uh, Lord's Supper, and Jesus is saying, I'm going to be betrayed, and they're all now saying, well, who's going to do it? Who's going to ask him who's going to be doing it? And Jesus actually tells them they, they can't catch on. They couldn't catch on because he told them who it was, and they just didn't catch on. He tells them the one that did bread with me, and then he tells Judas, go. But I want you to know something. Judas went through the same trial Peter did. Exactly the same. They were tempted. The only difference is that Peter repented and Judas didn't. But I have so much that I really want to talk about that I don't want to get, I get so excited and wanting to tell you what, what really took place here from my point of view. And, and so I get, get caught up in trying to sort of break it all down so that you can get it. So I need you to take some notes, okay? Because it's easy, easy to say um, that we love Jesus. It's one thing to say, uh, love you, Jesus, which means, you know, no judgment here, folks. But the real test is willingness to serve him. And that's what Jesus was telling Peter when he told him the first time, do you really love me? He says, are you really, Peter? Because he knew Peter repented right there in that moment. It's part of that repentant uh, spirit. And Jesus was asking him to commit your life. Do you really love me? Commit your life. But what this really means by that? You know, there's a, in that part of that scripture that Jesus is uh, talking to them, he says, do you love me more than these? And you're going to need to sort of highlight that in the particular scripture that I'm going to be reading with you right now. Do you really love me more than these, he tells them? Who is he referring to? Who are these these? Hmm? Now, because... Peter's in grief, and he doesn't know it. The first stage of grief is denial. You see? We think we're okay. Yeah, I suffer a trauma. In the divorce, I, yeah, I was so busy doing so many things, you don't even realize that there's a certain denial taking place. And Peter was definitely in denial. And so Jesus is addressing the issue here. He's going to say, are you really willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to face now, the these can be 
anything that we tie ourselves down to, to medicate. It could be a relationship. It can be a habit. It can be anything. It can be going back to doing what you used to do before and just, you know, move on with life. It can be anything. Jesus says, are you willing to commit your life more than all these things that you can use to try to pacify yourself, medicate yourself? And a lot of times we can even use religious things to medicate ourselves. I did. I dove right into ministry. Church was in trouble. I was in trouble. My kids were in trouble. It was, everything was in trouble. And I went right into fix mode. Let me fix it all. But you know, first of all, the first thing you got to fix is you. Doesn't mean you're not a believer. Jesus was walked with Jesus for three years. You can consider him a true believer. An apostle. And yet, he was in denial. So Jesus addressed him the first two times. Do you really love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. And so often, we get so caught up on the things of God that we forget God's purpose for calling us. So here, it's easy to say, love you, Jesus. But he's telling us, would you commit? Oh, I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to go with you. I'm ready to die for you. All these things we say. Listen to John chapter 13, verse 33. Jesus says, my children, I will be with you only a little longer. He says, you will look for me and, and you, won't, you won't see me. You know, I won't be here right now. Where I am going, you cannot come. He says, a new command I give you. Love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, Simon Peter asked him, uh, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, I am going, uh, where I'm going, you can't follow me right now. And he says, but Lord, I, let me follow you. Let me go with you. You know, I would, I would die. I would go to prison. I would do anything for you. And yes, we say, you know, uh, we could say all of that. Because if we don't deal with this denial, it will eventually catch up. This is why you find so many who fall away because of trials, because things don't go their way. Do you, do you truly love me? You see, and he said, well, Peter, life changed when he finally realized who Jesus was in that moment. Can you imagine? In that moment, the third time Jesus appeared to them after his resurrection. See? He realized he was broken. See, for so long, Peter was trying to manage it on his own strength, rely on what he knew about Jesus, his relationship with Jesus. And all of this, he, he had, and he says, this, this is it. This is what he had. And when Jesus was arrested, all that was gone. Well, let's, let's go a little further. Because Peter's identity was about to change. A change in that moment when he realized at that moment that, wow, this is who you are, Lord. His occupation changed. Right? He was a fisherman. Now he was an evangelist. He became a new creation. He was about God's kingdom. Think about things that happen in life because, you know, you don't realize that you can be serving God like Jesus, following Jesus. And I had an experience the other day. I'm a little ashamed to say this, but to be honest, I was in the car and some, I mean, I'm not going to use any excuses because, you know, I don't care what was going on. And the stresses that I had to face that whole week and physical challenges and all kind of things were happening. And all of a sudden, some guy was irrit irritating me with blowing his horn and the first thing that was about to come out of my mouth was a curse. I, I caught myself just before I came out, but I wanted to say it. And I'm saying to myself, wow, how? How can that want it to come out of my mouth? Man, <laughs> Where I am today in the Lord, how can that even, you know, I want you to understand something. I want, I want you to read something. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take you somewhere in Luke chapter 22. I want to go to verse 
31 right now. I want you to read with me, please. This is very important. Because when Jesus is talking uh, to Peter, or to the disciples, but specifically to Peter in this moment, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to, listen to this, sift you as wheat. Imagine Jesus saying, you know, Satan has asked Jesus if he can sift Peter. Sifting is a process that goes through the wheat to cut it, to it, and then you blow it, and it just flows away. He wanted to, and, and, and this is what Jesus says to him. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And which, and which you, okay, could turn back. He says, I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brother and sister. See, Jesus knew the day of the Lord's table, right there, they're reclining, having the Lord's Supper. And Jesus is telling this to Peter. Listen, the devil's asking right now, he can do this work in you. Satan wanted to crush Peter and the disciples like grain of wheat. But Jesus assured Peter that his faith, although it would falter, will not be destroyed. It will be renewed. Imagine, he's walked with Jesus for three years. He has done miracles. He has done all of this. And yet, listen to this conversation Jesus is having with Peter. Saying, you're going you're gonna to fall short. I remember serving the Lord that, I mean, I felt serving God powerfully like that. I shared that many times. I was in my prime in that spiritual awakening in my life, and I was like doing some miraculous things, and, and here it is, all of a sudden, everything is like turned upside down. Because we can get on a high with the way God uses us sometimes. And it's not based on the humility. We can never lose the element of humility. So Jesus is telling you, I'm, I'm praying for you. But this is how Peter replied in verse 33. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with to prison and to death. This is Peter's response after Jesus telling him, dude, So Peter still hadn't gotten it. This was at the Lord's table. You know what else was happening at the Lord's table at that moment? You really, you really want to know what was taking place? Because it was, it would surprise you. Go to Luke chapter 22. Let's go up a little bit to verse 20. In the same way, after supper, he took all of that and says, that was what we said, right? And the disciples are now, you know, Jesus tell them, well, who's gonna, who's gonna betray you, Lord? And who's who, who is it? And they're wondering and, and arguing about that. Right? And then in verse 24, also a dispute arose amongst them as to which was going to be considered the greatest. Can you imagine this conversation there? Who's going to be the better disciple? Who's going to be the greatest? And one minute they're discussing who's going to betray us, and the next minute it's like, uh, which one of us is going to be better? All flesh. And Jesus says to them, you know the saying, that you want to read that all the way through to verse 27. For who is greater than the one who is at the table? He says he's going to be the greatest to serve. He says, first shall be last and the last shall be first. The youngest. And he uses all these uh, analogies to let them know, listen, if you're trying to put yourself up there, in order to get up there, you have to be the least of the least. you got to be humble. And we fail to realize how many times did Jesus have to rebuke Peter? You know the day that, that they were talking about in John chapter 21 verse 15. Peter and John are the two, only two that notice uh, Jesus on the shore when they're fishing and they're on the boat. And so John says, is that the Lord? And Peter says, yes, it's the Lord. You know what Peter does? 
he, he wraps his coat around his waist and he jumps into the water and swims. I mean, talk about impetuous, right? He just gets, jumps out of the water, swims ashore to go meet Jesus. Why? Because he's still dealing with a lot of junk. He's trying to make up. Folks, you don't need to try to make up for nothing. Jesus took care of everything. And if we're still trying to make up for mistakes we've made, the junks that we because as soon as I, that curse word wanted to come out of my mouth, the enemy immediately said, you see, you're supposed to be this mature pastor. And for a minute, just, I was wondering, like, man, why is that even coming out? But after that moment, that first time with Jesus on that beach, John 13, verse 6 through 9, I want you to look at the facts here. A lot of times Peter was just emotional. And so when Jesus says, agape love, do you love me? He's saying, not referring to an emotional love. And I think that's the problem with a lot of times we want to feel this particular love. And this is sacrificial. Peter's identity was about to change and was changing in the moment. I need you to hold on to something as we prepare to close. And we'll conclude this next week. We need to focus on what never changes, first of all. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and what? And forever. Right? You guys got that? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and what? And forever. Now, turn your Bibles to Hebrew chapter 13, verse 8. And it says, so we say with confidence, that's verse 6, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, folks, who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. And then Jesus says in verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does that really mean? It means that Jesus will never change. He is perfect. And He has perfect love. And we need to understand perfect love as we walk through what Jesus was telling Peter when He told him, do you truly love me? I'd probably say, well, Peter should not understand that. But remember that the traumas we go through in life is the enemy trying to destroy our soul. Psalm 23, 4 says, he restores my soul. Your soul is your mind. It is your will. It is your emotions. My soul is a part of me that thanks, thinks, and chooses, and feels. And Jesus is telling Peter, we can't base this love on emotion. See, your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. Your soul controls the way you think. So as next week we're going to come and conclude a lot of this because the changes, we've got to understand what, focus on what never changes. And God never changes. See? And there are scripture verses we're going to use next week on that. We're going to focus on God's love that never changes. God's truth never changes. God's purpose for your and my life never changes. But we need to change. How does God help us when uh, part of our soul is damaged? God says, I want to restore, restore that area in your life. But a lot of times we want to avoid. So I'm going to conclude with this first part of when we are broken. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. Psalm 23, 4 says, He restores my soul. Amen? So even when we're facing trials and troubles, you know, and as it says in Romans 5, 3 and 4, even in our trials and troubles, these very things will develop mature character. 
Let's try to focus on what God is doing today so he can use us tomorrow. Amen? Don't forget that after this sermon, we're going to go right into a, a discussion and our Zoom service, uh, discussion service. And so let's just pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. We know that you love us, Lord. Father, I pray that we can actually do the same, truly love you, be willing to commit and not make this emotional, that we can truly come to a place where we can see what you have in store for us, Lord. Open our eyes, open our hearts, prepare us, Lord, to do your will right now. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus and all the saints said, amen and amen. Well, remember, discussion to grant. If you want to pray us, if you want to have any prayers, requests, we want you to go to livingword.nyc. If you have any donations and set your ties, also on livingword.nyc. Uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.